In the Weiss Laboratory, we study how environmental chemicals impact health. We study health from what we call a one environmental health perspective. And what that looks at is human health, animal health, and ecosystem health. And each of those is a different window into that health. But if we studied how they're interconnected, we can learn more about health and advance further and more quickly with understanding how toxicants affect health. The Wise Laboratory started with three people, myself, a master's student, and a part-time technician. And we really wanted to tackle the environmental chemical research questions that were hard, that nobody really wanted to take on. And so the way we saw it was we wanted to step out of the streetlight. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's an old story about <clears throat> somebody frantically looking for their keys at night under a streetlight. And a person comes along and says, how can I help you? And they said, well, I'm looking for my keys. And they said, well, did you drop them near here? And they said, no. And they said, well, why are you looking here? And they said, because this is where the light is. And we don't want to be working in the light on science where there's a lot of information. We want to bring the light into the darkness and light up new areas like chromosome instability in lung cancer, like one environmental health. The lung cancer is a huge problem. It is the deadliest types of cancer. There is this misperception that the smoking is the only cause of this disease. And actually there is more to it than just the smoking. Um, some environmental and occupational exposures can lead to this disease. And for that reason, in our lab, we're studying how metals cause lung cancer. And one of the species that we use under this one environmental health approach are whales. Not just because they're really cool to work with, but also because scientifically it makes sense to use them. Some of the great whales can reach 200 years and they are still known to have low cancer rates. So how is that even possible? One really cool thing that we've very understood from our research in our lab is the lab is when we treat human cells and whale cells with chromium, they both have similar amounts of DNA double strand breaks. However, human cells have incubation of DNA repair pathways, which leads to increased chromosome stability, while whale cells, they're still proficient at repairing those breaks. They still have active DNA repair pathways and have less chromosome stability, which potentially is a, a cause of having less cancer rates. But these changes between human and whale cells can lead to um, the investigation of key targets and their, the mechanism of chromium carcinogenesis that can help us identify new treatments for this disease. And the idea that we're not just researching whales, we're trying to create a solid understanding that is also transferable to people about their relationship with these great wonders and the life of, of human beings in the world. Both the impact that they cause on the environment but also what, what that means to us. In terms of the biopsy work, I think it's a whole team. And you have uh, people playing different roles within this team. Obviously, John Rice is the, you know, plays that God role of managing everybody and everybody. It's like, it's a high uh, energy, a uh, very charged environment. We all play different roles, uh, from photographers uh, to the people who handle the sample. I personally work as a captain, and uh, basically we're chasing down giants. This is a legendary work. Alligators are involved in my research through our One Environmental Health approach, and that is by uh, looking into the health of humans, wildlife, and ecosystem health. Why alligators, you may ask? Well, they've been around for quite a long time, around 37 million years. In order to treat lung cancer, we have to understand what these environmental chemicals are causing step-by-step-by-step by step by step process. And so if we can figure out what that step is, we would then know where to target. And so the BCDX2, for example, could be a possible biomarker, which could eventually lead to advancing early detection methods and also therapeutic targets for humans. The WISE Lab studies chromosome instability in lung cancer, and I share that passion. Chromosomes are one of the coolest structures to look at in the body. They package and protect our DNA, and they have instructions for telling us who we are, how we function, how we develop, how we grow. And we can look at them underneath a microscope, which is pretty cool. I look at chromosome instability from the context of liver disease, and I ask the question, how do environmental chemicals cause liver disease to progress and become more severe? 
The future of the WISE Lab is exciting. The research is exciting, the community outreach is exciting, and the mentoring experiences that we endeavor are exciting. We are a transformative lab, and in that way, we are able to step outside of the street light and go into the shadows. I'm particularly excited about some work that is going to be going on in the next couple of months, where we're looking at the crosstalk between the lung and the liver. Organ crosstalk is a very important and understudied part of biomedical and environmental toxicology. And if we can understand how these organs are literally talking to each other in our body, we may be able to come up with better therapeutic targets and biomarkers to help combat disease. I think that working in this lab is like living a continuous adventure. We go from working with whales, sea turtles, and alligators to doing vent work with cell culture and rodent models. And I really enjoy that we have such a diversity in our research questions. What I really like about working in this lab is it's like a family-like lab culture. We have supportive relationships. I really enjoy the fact that it's a diverse lab. I'm originally from Liberia, and so that was something I was looking forward to in the lab, and I really do enjoy being able to bounce ideas off of each other, brainstorming, and just sharing our research progress. There are a number of things I'm excited about in the future. We've taken our work from just understanding the DNA breaks and chromosome instability occurs to really getting to some very specific targets as to what is being affected. We're excited that we're going to discover some new ways to tackle the problem of how do we treat and handle cancer.